Adobe Illustrator being vector graphics software is mostly associated with creating illustrative graphics which have a cartoon or non-lifelike quality. By using a feature called a gradient mesh, however, we can set meshes over objects to define how colour or figurative light is placed. As such, with time and patience with the skill learned, we are able to develop graphics which are lifelike. The gradient mesh feature is so powerful when it's employed by a designer who has the skill as well as the time and patience, it can be used to develop graphics which look no less than photorealistic. So focusing on the first example, we've had time to observe the cherries that we have here and I'm sure you'll appreciate they look lifelike. And as I continue giving commentary, I'm going to zoom in to make this more apparent and we can observe the colours and the form more closely. The depth and detail of the image as a whole is possible due to the colour placements, the gradients. The lighter colours are acting as a reflection from the figurative light source, whilst the darker colours are simulating shadows. Not only that, gradients help suggest form and texture, such as the cylindrical form of the smooth stem and the glazed surface of the cherries themselves. We can further inspect the artwork by analysing the mesh in outline mode. And we can enter outline mode by selecting view and outline, or command or control and Y. Now we can see the raw mesh, which is defining the colour gradients. There are many miscellaneous shapes in this illustration too, but they're only being used to give somewhat of a rough look to the otherwise smooth texture of the cherries. The majority of the graphic is being achieved by the actual gradient mesh. Moving on to another example, there's no better way than to demonstrate the gradient's mesh ability to depict texture than these pistachio nuts. Zooming in, we can see the details to gain an idea of how the mesh is forming the gradients to give this realistic look. We can see that both the shells and kernels contain a vast amount of gradient detail. The detail isn't defined, rather it's smooth and subtle in its appearance, which in turn gives that aesthetic of a texture. That's to say that the shell of the nut is smooth, but it has very subtle bumps and indentations, which are brought out by the gradients. Entering outline mode, we can see the detail in the mesh. Those lines are knitted very tightly, and this allows for such detail. In this example, the gradient mesh is mostly applied to the saucer and its shadow, and the meshes are reasonably simple too. This goes to show that a fairly realistic look can be achieved with meshes which don't take too long to apply. We can separate the saucer and the shadow to see those two objects independently. And we can turn on outline mode to see all of the mesh lines more clearly. And as you'll see, there's a lot less lines in comparison to previous examples. And still it gives the saucer a realistic look by varying figurative light and shadow around the mesh. The primary shadow on the left too, with its varying tones, gives an effective look of realism and gives the sense that the object is upon a surface. So that concludes the overview of the gradient mesh feature. An important point is that the feature isn't just used for realistic illustrations. It can be used to give depth to any kind of illustration, including cartoon styles. We're focusing on realistic illustrations only to demonstrate the potential power of the feature. All in all, our study shows what's possible when we thoughtfully place blended colours. Next, we are going to explore how we can use the gradient mesh feature to develop some illustrations of our own. So here we have a sketch of a chilli which I've drawn on paper. I photographed it with my iPad, sent it to my iMac and used the edit place function to place it on the artboard. I have two layers set up, one for the sketch 
and one for the illustration, which I'll draw on top of the sketch. So now we're going to put the gradient mesh function into action. We're going to take a sketch of the chili and trace it to transform it into a vector image with elaborate gradients, which with any luck will have a hint of realism. Of course, we aren't shooting for photorealism here. I'm keeping it relatively simple so that you can follow and create your own. Before I begin, I'm going to select the sketch and in the properties panel, I'm going to bring the opacity down to around 30% so that I can see the illustration clearly on top of the sketch. Next, I'm going to lock the sketch layer in the layers panel, clicking until the padlock appears. And now I have that faded version of the sketch and I'm ready to draw on top. I'm going to go down to the color here. I have a black fill selected. I want a black stroke instead. I can click this double headed arrow here, which swaps fill and stroke. So I now have a black stroke with no fill. With that done, I'm going to select the illustration layer in the layers panel. And I'm going to click in and I'm going to draw around the sketch, following the line as close to as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. And meeting the original point. So that's the body of the chili. Next, I'm going to move on to the stalk of the chili. So with the pencil tool selected, clicking in, drawing around again, trying to match the sketch as close to as possible. And there we have it. Now I've only drawn in outlines here so that I could see the sketch beneath. So it's time to fill each shape with the appropriate colors. Selecting the body of the chili, we have that black stroke applied. And I'm going to select none beneath and I'm going to click fill and I'm going to select a red fill. I'm going to go as bright as possible here, moving up the magenta and moving up the yellow sliders in the color panel. I'm happy with this red. So moving on to the stalk again, we have the black stroke applied. I'm going to select none beneath here. I'm going to click fill and I'm going to choose a green here from the CMYK spectrum. And again, I'm going to use the sliders just to fine tune here, bringing up the black and the cyan. I'm going to bring the body of the chili to the front by selecting it, going to object, arrange, bring forward. So now the stalk is behind the body of the chili. I feel like this gives a better aesthetic to suggest that the chili is maybe lying on a table and pointing away. I can now hide the sketch because I no longer need it. So I'm going to click the eye symbol on the sketch layer in the layers panel and the sketch is made invisible so we can focus on the illustration. However, having reached the point of the main topic, we're now ready to assign gradients to the red and the green. Before we go about doing this, however, we need to ask ourselves a simple question. Where do we want the light source or light sources to be? For the sake of simplicity, We'll design based upon one single light source. A light source is a hypothetical light, natural or otherwise, that we need to imagine shining on the object. And this will dictate where we put light colors and dark colors on the shapes. So I've decided that I'm going to have my figurative light source around this area at top left which means that the shapes are going to carry lighter colors on the left hand side and darker colors on the right hand side. So I want the main highlight to be at the top of the body of the chili and I want lesser highlights to be down towards the bottom. So I'm going to choose orange for the bottom highlight. So going to the color panel with the red still selected, I'm going to bring down the magenta until I reach an orange that I'm happy with. Next, I'm going to use the mesh tool, keyboard shortcut U. Clicking upon this, I'm going to assign a mesh point down here. I can then continue to adjust the color with the sliders in the color panel if I need to. So just bringing down that magenta a little bit more. Deselecting. And now we can see the body of the chili has taken on a 3D form towards the bottom. And so we'll continue to add highlights by way of the mesh points to enhance this look. Now I'm going to work on the top part. So I'm going to select a white. 
from the color panel. With the mesh tool selected, I'm going to click up here on the body of the chili. So now we have the highlight up top and this helps to give greater strength to the 3D effect. The body of the chili now looks like a flaring cylinder. If I decide that I want to change any of the colors which I've set using the gradient mesh, I can select the direct selection tool and mousing over the shape, you'll see my original anchor point here created with the mesh tool. Clicking upon this, I can now go to the color panel and I can adjust the color once again. So bringing the magenta up, giving it a little bit yellow, and this is the result. So now I'm going to add the dark part. With the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select the original red. And I'm going to go to the color panel and I'm going to move up the black slider, the K at the bottom, to increase the darkness of the red. And I'm going to use the mesh tool to click on the right hand side of the body of the chili. And this is the result. So we have that darkness away from the light which is situated around the top left area. So now we're ready to move on to the stalk and we're going to follow the exact same steps. But we're going to zoom in just to get some detail on it because it's quite small. With the direct selection tool, I'm going to select the stalk to acquire the green. Once I have that, I'm going to deselect. I'm going to go to the color panel. I'm going to bring down the cyan and the magenta just to make a lighter green. With the mesh tool, I'm going to click around this point. Deselecting, I'm going to go to the color panel once again. And this time I'm going to make a dark green. Bringing the cyan back up and increasing the black, the K. We've got a dark green here. So using the mesh tool once again, I'm going to click on the right hand side of the stalk. And this is the result we obtain. So here we have the completed chili. It has a range of gradients defined by the gradient mesh function, giving a realistic aesthetic. The more time we spend with the gradient mesh, the more experience we become. And with time and patience to carefully place and adjust the mesh, we can acquire even greater results than this basic illustration herein. So try your hand with the gradient mesh function by drawing out your own chili or alternatively using my own sketch, which I've used here, provided in the resources.